Thank you, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer, I've never brought a motion of no confidence in the seven years I've been in this Parliament, and I hope actually never to do so again. Events of the last two years, and particularly the last few weeks, have signalled that the First Minister, in showing his confidence in Lorna Slater, the Minister for Green Skills, Circular Economy and Biodiversity, may be misplaced. And I rise today to offer Parliament the opportunity to state whether it shares the First Minister's confidence. Now, President Officer, I don't know Lorna Slater. Our only major interactions have been in this chamber or in committee. And I do not doubt for a minute her integrity. I do not doubt that she strives to do her best in a crucial and wide-ranging brief. And I do not doubt her commitment to the deposit return scheme. All of those are not in question in my mind, and nor do they fall to be considered today. My reason for bringing this motion is that since being appointed to this crucial ministerial role in autumn 2021, with particular responsibility for implementing Scotland's deposit return scheme, a scheme that all parties in this chamber supported and voted for and wished to see succeed, the minister has nevertheless struggled. Now, I think Kate Forbes said it best that the idea of the deposit return scheme is sound. It works well in other countries, but we cannot have a scheme that is well-intentioned but fails to achieve its aims and causes economic carnage in the process. Indeed not, but that failure, that economic carnage is exactly what we are seeing happening. Whether it be Lorna Slater's first DRS postponement to August 2023, 18 months ago, and then the second postponement to October 2025, just this month. Whether it be knowing for years that an exemption from the Internal Market Act was required, yet only applying for it at the 11th hour. I will. Ross Greer. I'm grateful to the member for the intervention. The Conservatives continue pursuing this line that our request for an exemption from the IMA was only requested in March of this year, ignoring the fact that in February this year, sitting on Alistair Jack's desk was a document entitled Full and Final Proposal for the DRS, but also ignoring the fact that nowhere in the common frameworks does it mention the official request for exemption that Alistair Jack only began to speak about in March. So I'm wondering, could Liam Kerr point me towards the point in the common frameworks where it actually says this request mechanism exists? William Kerr. Thank you. And of course, what we've just heard is the concession that until February, at the earliest, there was no final scheme on which to rule. And Lorna Slater then went on to contradict the scheme administrator, Circularity Scotland, who insisted that DRS was nevertheless very much viable with glass excluded. She chose a further postponement. Did she take legal advice before doing so? Well, she refused to tell me in committee last week, and many have concluded that the answer is no. Whether it was disrespecting the ENSEC committee by promising to publish and send a gateway report, then having failed to do so for months, ultimately producing only a summary. I asked what the Scottish Government had budgeted for DRS. Lorna Slater was confused on two occasions and told me what had been spent then sent me a letter saying that it was wrapped up in the Zero Waste Scotland budget, then quoted in that letter the wrong budget figures for the last three years. Whether it be knowing what would happen to the fines from the deposit return scheme, whether it be failing to warn Circularity Scotland bosses of the delay to the deposit return scheme in advance, then telling the committee, the Net Zero committee last week, that it was fully capitalised and there wasn't a problem with funding. Yeah. Albeit, she also told the committee last week that she didn't know the nature of that funding, a statement that was reiterated earlier today. And all that just a week before today's bombshell that CSL has entered administration and around 60 people are looking for work. These are people who trusted the minister to speak for them in government, to command the respect of this house and answer truthfully and fully and take a collaborative approach. And businesses who have forked out hundreds of millions of pounds now face a scheme that's entirely up in the air and the position on compensation is entirely unclear. And that's just the DRS side of the portfolio. Members will well remember Lorna Slater admi admitting 
to using a misleading renewable statistics, then not only failing to correct the record, but walking out of the chamber as I made a point of order to try and specifically highlight that. And the private charter boat to visit rum rather than using the public ferry at a cost of £1,200 against less than £10. Or having an empty limousine driven from the central belt to the northeast to pick her up and drive her back to Edinburgh. Indeed, she's used the chauffeur driven car for 50 journeys in the last year, despite urging Scots to use public transport instead of private vehicles. And then she confessed in November 22 that she didn't know the difference between the Scottish Parliament and the Scottish Government, whilst believing... Excuse me, Mr Kerr. Members, can I ask that we treat one another with courtesy and respect? Excuse me, members, we may at times disagree with what is being said. That does not mean that we continue to have conversations or make sedentary contributions. Mr Kerr. Whilst she also believes that economic growth is wrong, leading Fergus Ewing to describe her as the enemy of Scotland's small businesses. President Officer, these are significant errors of judgment in a portfolio which we all want, no, need to succeed. So, President Officer, in conclusion, I said at the start, and I remind the Chamber, this is not a question of Lorna Slater's integrity. It is not a question of whether one supports or opposes the Butte House Agreement. It is not a question of whether a member agrees with the principle of a deposit return scheme. The only question that is relevant is whether a member believes that Lorna Slater retains their confidence to carry out the duties, responsibilities and functions of the Minister for Green Skills, Circular Economy and Biodiversity. If she does, they will vote against my motion and signal that they believe she retains their confidence. If she does not, they will vote for the motion that they do not have confidence in Lorna Slater to continue as the Minister. In order that Parliament has that opportunity to speak, I move the motion in my name.